بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد الأمين أما بعد. I want to talk about something very important, and that is that the Akabirin, the founders of Dar al-Alum, they were very concerned with the issue of end of times. One of these great Akabirin was Shah Rafiuddin, who was the son of Shah Rafiuddin, Muhaddis Dilmi, Rahmatullahi And I want to talk about a letter he wrote to the Mahdi. And so let me tell you this because I feel that the Darul Ulum students are not as aware of their history as they should. And number two, they have been disconnected from their history. And number two, I want to encourage them to go back to their own history and to have that fervor and that iman and that vision that they had, the, those people that laid down the foundation of Darul Alum. Having said this, <coughs> let me first introduce you, before I talk about the letter, let me share with you a few things. The Shah, Shah Abdul Rahim, Rahimullah, he was the father of Shah Abdullah. And the Fat, Fatawa Alamgiri, he had a big role in the compilation and the editing and putting that together. His son, Shaulullah Muhaddas Dilbi Rahmatullah was the first person to translate Qur'an into a different language. All the translations of Qur'an you see in the world are due to this great man. And it is his sciences that have spread throughout the world, not just India, Pakistan, but from India, Pakistan, to Indonesia, to Africa, to Arabia, to Syria, to all over the world, a lot of the Asanid and a lot of the Ajazas they go back to this one person, Shaulullah Muhaddas Dibi Rahmatullah One of his sons, Shah Rafiuddin, as he was getting old, you know, as he was getting in the old age, and he is the one who was one of the founders of Darul Alum. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But as he was getting into an old age, he decided to live in Mecca. And because the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Banu Shayba would have the keys of the Kaaba till the end of time. So he went to Mecca and sought out Banu Shayba, the people that have the key to the Kaaba, even till today. And he gave them his letter and he gave them a sword and he gave them some other things telling them that pass this on each generation till it, the sword reaches the Mahdi. And he writes in the letter that when you, the Mahdi, to the Mahdi, that this sword, give it to one of the Mujahideen that will be fighting with you and so that I can have its reward. And then he says, as, f as for the reward of that battle, he says, today you are arranging the rows of your army and your battlefield. And he says, I want you to know that today your reward will be like the reward of the people who fought in the battle of Badr. Now, how he knew that? What was his source of saying that? I don't know that. But this is what he said. And he was a sahibul basira, if I can say it. He was a person of insight and understanding. And he had knowledge of the zahir and the batin. Now, Shah, uh, now Shah, Shah, uh, Shah, Shah Rafiuddin Rahimullah, he also, uh, you know, translated the Qur'an in the Urdu language, word by word translation, which is one of the main translations of the Qur'an that we find even till today. So this is Bani Shayba that the Prophet gave the keys to, and they have the keys even till today. Let me just very quickly uh, go over this point, okay? This is the key, you can see this over here, all right? And... Uh, this was uh, the Banu Shayba has been given a new key to the Kaaba recently, okay, because the old key had issues, and so the new key has been given to them, and they will continue to hold the key of the Kaaba, and the Mahdi will be there when they will be having the key to the Kaaba. And this is the idea that Shah Rafiuddin Rahimullah had when he read the hadith of the Prophet that they would have the key till the end of time. And so he stipulated from that or deduced from that that if I give them my letter and give them the sword, they will be there when the Mahdi is there.
Okay, so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, take it, O Bani Talha, eternally up to the day of resurrection. It will not be taken from you unless by an unjust or an oppressive ruler. So they have the key up till now, but uh, will another oppressive ruler come and take the key from them? Allahu A'lam. But he stipulated from this that they will be there in Mecca even when the Mahdi is there. Okay, and... Uh, the great mor morning, a great servant of the Kaaba, Shah Abdul Aziz Shayba, the gatekeeper of the door of the Kaaba, he passed away, and the key then was now given to his brother. So this is the key, and this is the uh, key. It's uh, I believe made of wood. This one, the first one, and then after that, the new key. I think this is maybe the new key that they have. Allahu A'lam. I don't know the details. But coming back to Shah Rafiuddin, because I have a few points to make. Uh, Shah Rafiuddin was not just a Sahibul Kamal, like a person of extreme level of knowledge and understanding of the deen. But he w had advanced so much in mathematics and he was a master of many other subjects besides the Dini Alum per se. And he is one of the foundation uh, founders of Darul Alum, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Now, uh, Shah uh, Rafiuddin Dehlbi uh, Rahimullah, okay, uh, this is an article written about him by no other person other than, less than uh, Abu Hassan Nadwi Rahmatullah Alayhi, okay. And uh, he, this is just some things about him. Uh, one of the great scholars of that time says about uh, says about him that uh, so Shah Abdul Aziz, the older brother, wrote about his younger brother. Now my brother brother manages all affairs. Though younger to me, has attained an equal proficiency in all arts and sciences. God Almighty provided me the opportunity of bringing him up, and thus honored me with his grace. On his return to Delhi after a brief. Uh, excursion, he presented me a brief yet valuable brochure discussing the unique issues not touched earlier by anyone that consists of his matchless commentary on Sutun Nur and its underlining wisdom. I can say with full confidence that in this remarkable work he has succeeded in elucidating the gist and the drift of the surah in an inimitable manner which can illuminate the hearts. The point being that these were great people and it was him, along with other people, that set the foundations of Darul Alum. And he was very concerned about the end of times. Look, in the passing away of the Prophet ﷺ, when Jibra'il comes to teach about the deen, he puts the deen into four different categories. The, the, the Islam, the Sharia, the do's and the don'ts. Iman, about certainty, knowledge of the unseen. Belief in the uncertainty, to know that this is the truth. And number three, how to get close to Allah, Ihsan. And number four, the, having the basira of these three things, understanding the Sharia, having true Iman, and getting close to Allah, and using this basira in the nur that is established by this, by being able to see the ayamullah, the days of Allah. What is happening before us? Where are we headed? The ulama of Darul Alum and the Muslim scholars in general and the Muslims in general, we have to be concerned with history, where we are and how we got here. Just as our Akabirin, they were politically very active and they were historically very conscious. Let me repeat that. Our Akabirin, they were politically active and they were historically conscious of where we are headed. I see that many times the people that graduate from Darul Alum today who are supposed to be in the inheritors of Shaulullah, inheritors of the great ones, who are politically active and conscious of where they are in history, who are very concerned about the end of times particularly, that our scholars today, the young ones, they are so good, so good at the Islamic law aspect of things that they sometimes lose the bigger picture. If we don't know where we are in history, we can't lead the people anywhere. And so the knowledge of the end times, the knowledge of Akhiru Zaman is extremely, extremely important. And in this regard, 
the letter that was written to Imam Mahdi by uh, Shah Rafiuddin Rahimullah. And you know, he's buried in Jannatul Baqi because he died in Mecca then, or he, he died uh, over there. Okay, now I also want to mention that not only Shah Rafiuddin, but his father, Shah Wliullah, also wrote about the end of times and what would be happening as in his some of his uh, kashfs. He wrote about them. Before that, uh, Mujadat al Sani, he wrote about the Mahdi and wrote about the the walaya of the Mahdi and his understanding of the Mahdi. He was very concerned, starting from Mujadat al Sani. In fact, Mujadat al Sani says that it will be from his tree that many of the members of the the people that will join the Mahdi will join from his branch of knowledge and branch of understanding. And over here, just to give you some uh, understanding of where we come from historically. So you have Shaulullah Muhaddas Dilvi Rahmatullah Then his son, which includes Shah, uh, Shah Rafiuddin over here. Then Shah Abdul Aziz. Then you have Sayyid Ahmad Brilvi. Now Shah Rafiuddin, he established Dar al -Ulum as the educational basis to counter the British Empire and counter that British influence. And then Sayyid Ahmad Brilvi and Shah Ismail Shaheed, the grandson of Shah Wliullah, and Sayyid Ahmad Brilvi, they did jihad against the British. And then you have from there Mamluk Ali, Rahimullah, Shah Abdul Ghani, Mujaddadi, Rahimullah, Haji Imdadullah, Rahimullah, uh, then uh, Gangoi Rahimullah, then Qasim Notwi Rahimullah, uh, Sheikh Al Hind Mahmud Al Hassan, who also fought against, was getting ready. He had this movement, the the silver handkerchief movement that he had to fight against the British. Then came, you know, the issue of India and Pakistan. Then you have uh, Ashraf Ali Thani Rahimullah. Then you have Shah, uh, Anwar Shah Kashmir Rahimullah. These are all actually students of Sheikh Mahmud Al Hassan Rahimullah. Then you have uh, uh, Hussein Ahmed Mani, Rahimullah. Then you have Z uh, Sheikh Zakaria, Rahimullah. So you have all these great scholars coming from this lineage. And majority of them were very interested in the end of times. And like I said, it's almost one-fourth of the deen is, is Islam, one-fourth of the deen is Iman, one-fourth of the deen is Ihsan, one-fourth of the deen is being conscious of where we are standing in time and where we are going in time okay so this is very important in this regard and then also uh i want to just mention this okay that uh the head of the committee of darul alum deoband was Molana muhammad qasmi notwi and he had a dream in which the prophet told him that don't put the darul alum in this place but put it into another place that's more spacious the head of the founding committee of Darul Alum Deoband was Maulana Muhammad Qasmi Notwi Rahimullah. He stated that he was inspired to do this in a dream in which the Prophet ﷺ spoke to him. Okay, and I'm going to talk about this in a second. Darul Alum Deoband specializes in an eight year alim course. Then, during the time of the construction of Darul Alum, the supervision was in, uh, the, the, in charge was Rafiuddin. He witnessed this dream that the Prophet ﷺ had entered the madrasa. The Prophet ﷺ had his staff and he blessed the land and stated the following. The foundation that has been dug in the north in the north facing direction, its court shall be too small. So now Rafiuddin Rahimullah has a dream with the Prophet also about the boundaries of this madrasa, Darul Alum. And the Prophet ﷺ marks the and then when he found out when he woke up and looked when he saw in the morning he saw in the ground those very marks that the prophet had put in his dream okay uh and so after the dream uh rafiuddin rahimullah found the mark made by the prophet وسلم, to be present in the courtyard so he dug the new foundations on the mark and began the construction of the madrasa and so there were other members too but what is what is the point of of this the point of this is that don't limit yourself to 25% of Islam or 25% of the deen, just Islam. Also focus on Iman. Also focus on Ihsan. And then, of course, focus on the Ayamullah, the days of Allah. You have to be historically conscious as they were. And when you are historically conscious, okay, when you are historically conscious, then the Prophet 
will come to you in dreams from time to time and 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 will help you or through his duas or through his advice but i regret i regress i want to come back to the issue of that darul alum has a history your founder of this darul alum he was concerned about when the mahdi is coming i want the darul alum students and the muslims in general especially the ulama and especially among the ulama the darul alum ulama that they be concerned about the coming times that they think about the coming times it's not enough to be just concerned about okay where am i going to get a job and who is going to pay my salary and i know a lot of us are stuck in this rut many times but we have to think beyond that and we have to work on focusing our basira in the right ways and this is the time of akhiru zaman that the great scholars like shawli la muhaddas wrote, wrote about sharafuddin was interested in and you know he said give this sword to one of your members of your fighting army and so that i can get that reward and then of course he said because today is like the battle of badr so if i if you fight in the battle of badr i get some of its reward this is great for me this is what he wanted and he was concerned about this so the ulama of darul alum they need to focus on the end of times on the kitabul fitan on the kitabul malahim on the on and what to do and how to prepare because things are about to get bad very 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 bad for the muslim ummah fitnas are coming all over the place we have to help others to get out of their fitna so that we can get out of our own fitnas we have to get closer to the sunnah of the prophet to the quran of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know and we have to be reading surah al-kahf every friday and we have to focus on what's going on and we have to become historically conscious and we have to become politically minded sheikh ahmed sarhandi rahimahullah he said when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to punish a people okay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them politically blind and politically oblivious and then what happens at the political level then you, it's too late and so my advice to my younger ones in darul ulum is you have a great role to play but you must connect and have the nisba and the connection to your elders and so please take this advice seriously jazakumullahu khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh